And if you really want to check that if that object is an iterable, because it, it may have implemented get item, uh, is instance or is subclass doesn't seem to be a really good candidate for it. So what can we do in such cases? So it's really better. Let's now we are actually heading to iter function, and actually we should use iter. So as I said, we are we are seeing this example three. As I said, uh, in iter iter function actually retrieves an iterator for from an object and gives that to you. How it does it, that's okay. You don't have to understand it at the moment, but that's the function of iter. Iter actually gives an iterator from an object to you so that you can perform looping, comprehensions, unpacking, and anything that you have to do with that iterator. So for that, I've created three classes. One employee record class, which has just this constructor in it method, but it doesn't have anything else, which means it doesn't have any iter method, it dunder iter method, or it doesn't have any dunder get item method, which is it's it, it is fairly understood that it's not uh, an iterable. It's not an iterable. Well, uh, there is uh, employee record iter. It implements this iter function. It implements this next as well, but you don't have to stress about it. I will tell you everything right now. What I'm trying to convey here is just try to focus on that. Focus on that. In the essence, it implements this iter method, which means this employee record iter should be an iterable. Again, the third class that I have, it implements this get item method, which means again, it should be an iterable. So employee record get item and employee record iter are iterables, or like object being or object that will be instantiated from these two classes will would be iterables, but from an employee record, it won't. Now, if we want to recognize, okay, which is an iterable and which is not out of these, as I said uh, that using is instance or is subclass is not uh, going to fetch you the right results because ABC iterable is not recognizing your uh, objects that objects, all the objects that implement uh, get uh, item, under get item, it is not recognized by ABC dot iterable. Uh, then the alternative way is to actually the best way is to implement this iter function. So because iter function, it recognizes both your get item and iter both, iter method both. So uh, it will, if it successfully fetches your iterator out of your object, which means that it is, uh, it is iterable, it is an iterable. If iter method returns an iterator without any issue, which means that object out of which you got that iterator, it, it is an iterable. But if your iter method failed to fetch the iterator, in that case, it will raise a type error. And if the type error is raised, which means your object was not an iterate, uh, iterable. So what we are trying to do here is that I have this employee record object. I'm trying to fetch the iterator out of it. Well, you can guess that I may not be able to do that. That's why I have put it in try catch, try accept block. And uh, as I said that it will raise a type error and uh, that's what we are trying to catch here and trying to print here. And for it, as I also, I have mentioned that iter is really good in, it's really good in identifying your iterator from the objects that are that are implement that have implemented uh, dunder get item or dunder get or dunder iter so it will it will be able to fetch iterator from both of those objects both of uh, such objects and uh, you should be able to get iterator pretty easily and there shouldn't be any any issue or any exceptions so that's what we are trying to demonstrate here that iter is a better better way to uh, know whether an object is an iterable or not rather than you should not use other i mean actually you should not use uh, uh, you should not use is is instance or is subclass methods or functions uh, and rather you should use the iter function so let me just quickly run this example 3 and you see that there was an exception raised uh, for employee record and it says that employee record object is not iterable 
which is what we accept, uh, which is what we expected. It is coming from here, employee record, and it is, we are printing the error that employee record object is not iterable. That's because it doesn't implement any of the dunder iter or dunder get item methods. But we didn't see any exceptions for uh, the iter, employee record iter class, or uh, employee record uh, iter object or employee record get item method. Yeah, that's because iter was able to fetch the iterator out of them. So I hope I have made this clear that you should use uh, iter methods to know whether or whether an object is an iterable or not. Okay, so we are just trying to uh, lay a foundation in iterables and, uh, and and for understanding iterators. So these are some basic concepts that I'm trying to uh, make you understand. Uh, let's see the fourth example. This is uh, going to be an example where uh, we will see a full-fledged implementation of uh, get item, under get item, and as as I said that we will we will understand everything. So let's see this example first. So I have an employee record class. What employee record class has is that it has implemented this get get item, under get item method, which means it is an iterable, and it has this call method. So whenever you create an object and you actually invoke that object, this call method gets executed. But that's okay. I think we don't need we we don't have to uh, execute this call object. I think I'm initializing the entire list here itself. When you actually construct the object, uh, when you actually uh, uh, run this constructor and instantiate the object, uh, the object will have employee names, and employee names is a list that contains these uh, names of name, names of these uh, Indian cricket players. So. What we are going to do is that once we have that object, let's try to loop over it and see what it get, what it prints. So if you see, it prints uh, the name of all players. But how does that happen? Let's try to understand the mechanics behind it. Uh, okay, if you remember that I said that for loop under the hood, create fetches the iterator of the object that we are trying to loop over and then uses that iterator to loop to loop over its elements. It does that under the hood. However, now iterator, what is that going to do? Iterator is actually going to call get item. I mean, that iterator is used to invoke this, execute this call item, call, uh, uh, call this get item method. And get item method works by indexing. Which means if you have if your class has if your object implements dunder get item method, so which means that if you want to loop over that object, then you have to do you you have you it will be done using indexing, which means first item of the object will be fetched using index zero, then index one, then index two, and so on and so forth. Uh, but there is a problem. How does it know where to stop? For example, if you see the implementation of this get item, it just takes that index. As I said, that get item is going to take an index and it will return that particular that particular item in the list. So what are we return, returning? We, we wanted to loop over this list and we wanted to return every item in that list based on this index. So if get item is implemented, then Python will send index zero to fetch the first element. It will send index one to fetch the second element. This will, this every, all, all this thing will happen under the hood for, of your, or under the hood of your for statement, for loop. The for, when, when you, when you have written this for loop and your code is executed, uh, under the hood for, uh, what will happen under the hood uh, of this for loop is that your, uh, get item will be invoked with every index and all the items will be fetched. But uh, how, let's say, because we have just four element, we are not putting, we, are, we have not put any condition which will say, okay, this is the uh, point where you have to stop because Python can throw like, keep on throwing index um, indexes, right? It can throw and it, it can go on and on and on, but we just have four elements. So it should, practically stop at index three, which means zero, one, two, 
and three. Fourth index is actually index going out of the range, out of the bound of this list boundary. It's going out of this boundary. So what happens is in Python, if you if you try to access an index on a list, which is actually index out of the bound, Python generates an exception called as index error, which will happen in this case as well. When you fetch, when you try to fetch an element which is actually going, it which is uh, beyond the range in, of the list, Python will generate it will generate an exception index error, and that will be used to signal that now we should stop looping. If you don't get, if you don't uh, believe me, now if you okay, if you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you. Now what is printed? We have printed zero, one, two, three, all four pairs here. Let's say I want to stop at player two itself. So, or which means I just want to print two players. So let's say I, if the index is greater than one, simply raise index error and I'll just say, okay, um, and index error is raised. And now let's try to loop. As I said, index error was raised when 0th index was sent, it fetched the 0, 0th index because this statement is false. 0 is greater than 1, it's false. So it fetched the 0th element, which is Virat Kohli. It printed it here. Then first index was, index 1 was uh, sent. 1 greater than 1 is again false. So it fetched the f uh, element at index 1, which is Roy Sharma, and that, that got printed here. But then when index 2 was sent, then index 2, at index two, it was it was it raised this error index error, and that was that used as a signal. That was used as a signal to stop the stop the loop, and that's where you you don't have and that's how that's the beauty of Python that you don't have to care about all the all the all these things. It everything happens in background. You don't have to worry about uh, okay how uh, how does how do we, how the indexing 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 part is taken care of and other stuff it's you just you just write your for loop and you just do whatever you have to do with every element in that list okay so that's how get item works and i hope that it was helpful and uh, with that i would like to close down this video i'm trying to i'm trying to make I, i'm i'm making an effort to keep the video lens small in my previous uh, playlist i had where which was on decorators i had uh, videos as long as third, like half an hour and so uh, and i felt that it may be heavier on you so i'm just trying to keep the video lens shorter and well well with that i'll i'll close the video and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>